Hi everyone, my name is Paul Brochesen and today I'm going to be showing you a plugin I've been developing for Houdini that integrates Perforce into Houdini called P4 Houdini. Alright, so this plugin is currently a private beta at the time of this recording. Um, it is invite only. If you are interested in evaluating the plugin at this time, uh, please feel free to reach out on my website. Um, but for now, what I want to do in this video is basically just show you uh, how easy it is to get set up with a plugin for Houdini, as well as uh, you know showing some of the, uh, the features that the plugin has uh, that should make your life a whole lot easier. All right, so to begin with, uh, installing it for Houdini, what you basically do is you just clone this repository, uh, which is essentially in just a package format, the same way that you'd, for example, download SideFX Labs from GitHub, and then install the, uh, the JSON, uh, this one here, right? So that uh, Houdini can properly load it uh, in your environment. All right, the next thing that you should do is make sure that you have uh, Python installed on your machine. The version of Python that you should have is 3.7.4. And the reason it needs to be this exact version is because that is the version of Python that Houdini is using. So let's say that Houdini updates to 3.9 or something else, then you need to make sure that you have Python 3.9 installed in your machine. All right, the other thing that you should make sure you have, of course, is uh, Perforce installed on uh, your machine, right? Which is this one here, P4V, which should also automatically come with all of the command line tools that this plugin will make use of. Cool. So now that you've loaded up the plugin and you've installed Perforce, you've installed Houdini, the very first time you boot up Houdini, you can open up the P4 Houdini shelf, which you can find over here if you don't have it yet, right? I have it open here. And then you should click this button here, install P4. And what this will do is it'll install all of the dependencies and all of the Python modules that this uh, plugin requires for the plugin to properly function inside of Houdini. All right, so after you've done that, it'll ask you to reboot Houdini, which I don't need to do because I already have it set up. And then you should click on Set Depot, which opens up this dialog, which allows you to browse to the Perforce repository where you have configured uh, Perforce to save your files. So in my case, uh, I'm going to be showing you. I am going to be using a local uh, depot or a personal server uh, because I cannot use the remote server that I use for work uh, to demonstrate this video. It however works the exact same way. Um, there's a config file that you place in the root of your Perforce uh, repository which will get used to log in with your credentials. So I'm going to hit OK um, just to show you what my Perforce looks like. Looks like this. We have a bunch of uh, history. We have pending change lists. And of course, the files that you can find in my workspace that have not been added yet. Okay, so now that we know how to install the plugin and we should assume we're all good, um, we should, of course, you know, configure our uh, config file, which you can read about on this GitHub page. But what I want to be showing you now is how to use the plugin and what all the functionality uh, contains in this plugin. So to begin with, I'm going to be going through this list here and then showing you some manual things you can do with the plugin as well. So first things first, uh, the thing that always bothered me is, you know, when I was using Houdini and I was saving my file, uh, so we're going to be saving it in my, uh, my Perforce repository, right, over here. We're going to just call it uh, my cool hip, like that. As soon as we hit accept, uh, you know, we'd have to go into Perforce and, uh, you know, find the hip file that we just created and uh, mark it for add. But now what the plugin allows you to do is have this dialog automatically pop up where you can see, you know, it has, um, you know, taken this hip file that we've just hit saved on and we're able to select either a change list that, you know, already exists or create a new change list or use one of the default change lists that the plugin creates for you. So I'm going to be making a new change list and I'm going to be calling this one uh, my first change list. And then, you know, I'm also going to add a comment to say what I added. I'm going to say added uh, my cool hip. Then we're going to hit add and what that will do is it'll automatically create the change list for you here in Perforce uh, with the description as we can see here just like that and the file being marked for add over there. So as you can see that was completely automatic. I did not do anything uh, in terms of uh, pressing buttons. All I did is just hit file save as and it would automatically open up that prompt. 
Now, let's take a look at how we would do it manually. So I'm gonna be making another hip file called mycoolhip2. And this time I'm not gonna be adding it automatically, as you can see, right? So now I'm gonna have uh, mycoolhip2, which is not yet added to the change list. I'm gonna be adding it manually, right? So we can hit this button here that says add slash checkout, which will automatically also prompt this dialog here uh, to manually save the hip file. Now, we can either once again make a new change list or select a change list that we've created before. Now, I'm gonna be selecting the other one that we added before. So I'm gonna say add a comment again, added my cool hip two. Now, of course, these are not good descriptions of what I've been doing, but for the purpose of this uh, video, uh, this will suffice. Now, we hit add, and as you can see, once again, we now have my cool hip two being added to the change list. Great. Now, next thing I want to be showing you is that it also has support for uh, automatically checking out and adding of HDAs that you create. So let's create our very first HDA. Uh, I like creating SOPs, so I'm going to be uh, creating a SOP um, HDA. I'm going to, of course, make use of the new Houdini 19 uh, functionality for creating digital assets by just hitting digital assets, create new. I'm going to be saying uh, this one is called my cool HDA and we can just leave this as default. I'm going to name this one my cool HDA over here as well. We're going to of course set the saving path to be in the Perforce repository, right? We're going to select OTLs, hit accept. And then when we click, click create, once again, we can see that it opened up this prompt where we're able to select the change list that we want, add a comment. So for example, added uh, my cool HDA and we're gonna hit add, and uh, this will once again also automatically add the HDA to the change list. Now, uh, so far so good, we're gonna hit save, and uh, we're not gonna get any permission errors or anything, uh, because we've just created these files, they've not been locked yet by Perforce, um, which brings me to the next uh, piece of functionality of the plugin, which is submitting partial change list from inside Houdini. Now, let's say you've, you've done a bit of work and you really like what you have so far and you wanna make a record of all the changes that you've made, then you can go to the shelf and hit the submit button. And what this will do is it'll bring up uh, this dialog here, which allows you to select all of the change lists that you have. And on here, you can once again, you know, make some last changes to the, uh, the description that you've created and you're able to select which uh, files you'd like to select and submit to Perforce. Now, in my case, I'm gonna be submitting the HDA and the mycoolhip2, which is the file that I have open, and I'm gonna leave the other one uh, to not be submitted. All right, so let's hit submit, which will automatically submit the change list that you've created, right? Which if we go to our uh, history here in our depot, uh, we should now see that uh, we do indeed have this change list with the changes that we've made automatically submitted to Perforce. Now, Let's hit uh, save on uh, this hip file, which will once again prompt this dialog, allowing us to um, you know, create a change log, a change list for the file, or we're gonna hit add. And as you can see, we don't really need to think about what we're doing with Perforce uh, and, and Houdini because it does everything automatically for you. Same thing with the HDA, we can hit save node here, which will once again prompt uh, you to add the file to Perforce and uh, mark everything for add or check it out in this case, right? So in this case, since they were already added, it has checked them out instead of adding them. Cool, so the next thing I wanna be showing you is uh, crawling the hip file for uh, any dependencies that you might have. So far we've seen you know, a hip file being modified and hitting save on it. We've seen HDA being modified and hit save on it. Uh, but that's not all you do inside of Houdini. Oftentimes you have ROPs all over the place inside of your network and uh, you know you might not have those hooked up with, um, with Perforce yet. So what I'm, what I'm be showing you is how the plugin handles those. So let's say we have this hip file uh, that we've already been working on before we installed this plugin. And as you can see, we have a bunch of files being uh, you know, written to disk here by a, a ROP geometry, but also by a file node. And interesting thing about a file node is that you can use it to either load right, read files or write files or both, um, which means that you might not always want to, you know, look at this dependency and add it to the change list. But we'll see how that works in a, in a second. For now, we're gonna be assuming that all of these, uh, these files here had already been written to disk and logged in Perforce manually, right? 
In my case, uh, if we go to workspace and look at the geo folder, uh, we already have all of these being, uh, you know, added here on Perforce. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be creating a new change list and I'm going to be saying um, uh, manual change list like that. I'm going to hit OK and then we're going to submit that change list. All right. So now what we should get if we try and hit save on this node is we're likely going to get a permission error, right? It's going to say, hey, this file that you're trying to write to, um, you know, is locked by Perforce. Now, to solve this, I've added a shelf tool here called Checkout Dependencies, and when you click it, it's going to scan all of your, uh, your files or all of your nodes in your network and look for files that are being written to disk. And as you can notice here, it has added animatedpighead1.bgo.sc all the way to animatedpighead9.bgo.sc, and that is because it also properly uh, handles um, you know, the, the frame number expression in a file. And we can see that it has added line.bgo, which is this file SOP here, as well as regular pighead.bgo. So what we were doing is once again, uh, adding all of those to the change list. So that's adding those as a checkout. There we go, they've all been added to checkout. And uh, now we're all good. We can just cook our network. We're not gonna get any permission errors. Everything is just gonna work just fine. Now, you might be wondering, uh, we have a file SOP here, right? So let's say we just have a file SOP and we load the default.bgo. If I now crawl for dependencies, it's gonna say no untracked file dependencies found. And that is because the plugin uh, intelligently knows that this file SOP is reading from disk. It's not gonna be trying to check out this file here because it is not being written to. It's only being read from and we don't need to check out files that we're reading from. So the way that you can configure this in the plugin I'm going to be showing you is using this JSON file that is found inside of the plugin. On here, you'll have a dictionary called nodes, which specifies all of the internal node names uh, of nodes that you want to mark for scanning of dependencies. And as you can see, we have file cache, we have the ROP Alembic, we have the ROP geometry, right, which is uh, this node here. And on it, we have a keyword that says SOP output and then a, a variable called true. And what that means is it's going to be looking at the parameter called SOP output, which is this one here, and make sure that this file is being checked out if it you know, exists or if it needs to be added or not. Now for the file SOP, uh, you know, we don't necessarily always want to check out the file from the file parameter. We only want to be checking out the file parameter if the parameter called file mode, right, which is this one here, file mode, is set to write files. And write files equals a value of two when we evaluate the expression uh, in Python. So uh, that means that it is only going to mark files uh, that are being you know, specified in the file SOP if file mode is set to two. Now let's say you create your own nodes, right? Your own HDAs that write things to disk. This is the file where you could add you know, support for those very easily yourself. Okay. Great, so now we've seen you know, scanning hip file for uh, dependencies, we've seen how to submit things, we've seen how to modify the description of an existing change list. Um, the next thing I wanna be showing you is the ability to make files writable. So let's say that we're just gonna hit submit uh, on all of these cool files that we have created and we're gonna hit save. And now let's say you, know, you hit save on a file that um, you haven't checked out yet. Now, if you are using a shared Perforce repository where other people might also be checking out files, the plugin will show a blue check mark here if another user has checked out a file. Now, let's say you need to be saving this file just for you know, various purposes, uh, but you don't want to be checking it out. What you can do is you can right click on any of the files here and then just select a button that says make writable. Oh, that's a, a quick error that I have there. Um, I'm just gonna hit submit that real quick and fix it after I've recorded this video. Okay, so I'll just demo it using uh, something else, using the dependencies, for example. Now, let's say you have this file and it is being used by another user. You'll see the blue check mark, like I said, and you just wanna make it writable because you wanna modify the file. Now, let's use the regular pig head. What you can do is simply right click the file and hit make writable. And what that will do is, as you can see, change the icon here to a W for, for it being writable and uncheck the file for mark for add. 
Now what you can do is just hit cancel, but now that file uh, that we just marked for add, this one here, has now been made writable, which means that we can simply uh, you know, hit save to disk and it is not going to be complaining that there are any permission errors. Cool. So now that we've seen you know, various uh, ways of uh, automatically using the plugin, I also want to show you that you can manually use the plugin to, for example, automatically check out and uh, write uh, to files using uh, Python. So I've created this, um, this file here as a demonstration purposes for the video. And what you'll notice is if you scroll down to the pre-frame script and post write script, you'll see that there is a bunch of Python here. And what I've done is basically written some Python that will automatically uh, check out the file that is being written to if it already exists on disk. And alternatively on the post write script it is going to add uh, a file for add if it did not exist yet on disk, right? So this means that uh, regardless of whether or not the file already existed or already existed, it is going to intelligently either add or check out the file before it does anything that will throw a permission error. Now, if you look at the expression, you can see that it's uh, not too complex. I'm going to be simplifying this so that it's just a, a single line or two lines of code. Um, but essentially what it does is it just reads the, the file path, right? This one here uh, of the, uh, the, the files being written. Then what it's going to be doing is it's going to check if the file already exists. And if it does, it is going to you know, initialize the plugin. It is going to add or check out the file if it needs to. And then for you know, debugging purposes, I've just added a print here that will tell us whether or not we checked out the file or added the file uh, on the pre-render script. So let's hit save to disk here. And what we'll see is that it says added or checked out the file automatically in the post frame script. So in this case, the file did not exist yet, right? It, because it added it on the post frame script. So now if we you know, submit this, uh, this file here like that, and we're gonna hit render or save to disk again. Now what it's going to do is it's going to check out the file before it is being written to by the, uh, the ROP itself. So we'll never get permission errors anymore just like this uh, because the plugin handles all of that for us. All right, so this is just one example of using the plugin manually. You can do many more things with it. For example, if you have your own ways of writing and saving HDAs to disk or saving uh, HIP files or whatever else it is you want to do, um, you can just modify the code yourself. Now, if you want to read how you know the plugin works for the other uh, shelf tools, you can just edit the shelf tools and check out the, uh, the Python code that's there. Um, the Python module for the plugin, however, itself is compiled, so it is not source available at the moment. Um, but it is something that I might be considering in the, uh, the future. Now, there's one last thing that I want to be showing you before I'm going to end this video uh, for now is the p4preferences.json, uh, which allows you to configure things, you know, um, that the, how the plugin deals with things. So if you want to manually set the client root, right, for your repository, you can do that here. This is basically the, the field that the shelf tool modifies. You can set the default name for a changed list. So in the case that you manually check out things automatically with a Python script, this is the changed list name that it's going to be using. Uh, you can either uh, you know, auto-connect or not auto-connect to Perforce uh, when you um, create uh, you know, an action with the Perforce plugin. Uh, you can enable or disable the generation of icons, uh, which will speed up the generation of the prompts a little bit, but you'll have less feedback. And then here you can also automatically uh, disable any of the automatic checking out or you know prompts that you'll see in the interface. Uh, so for example, do you want the plugin to automatically prompt you to add whenever you hit save on a, a file? Yes or no? Do you want to automatically check out the hip file when you hit save when it already exists on Perforce? Um, do you want to update your hip file before it loads? Yes or no? And do you want to trigger the uh, checkout on save on hip files? Yes or no? So if, for example, you want to be doing everything manually using shelf tools only, then what you do is in this, uh, this preferences file, you just set all of these to fat, false and uh, you should be good to go there. All right, that's it. That's the plugin for now. Um, I'm going to be ending the video. If you have any feedback or any thoughts or, or functionality that you'd like to see, please feel free to reach out on my website. Uh, which is this website here. It's just ambrosism.com. And then you can go to the contact form where you can fill out your name, email, subject, and message, and uh, I'll be receiving your email. Thank you and have a nice day.